We're going to look next at uh, problem 55 to find the curvature of conic sections. Specifically, I think I'll, I'll look for the curvature of an ellipse. Uh, here's an ellipse. We'll give it an equation of x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And let's put point C at parametric location t uh, on that. What, what does parametric location t mean? Uh, we can see that it's uh, a cos t and b sine t. Now, curvature, what I'd like to do is create um, the circle that just touches the ellipse. Uh, let me do a finite approximation. I'm going to create the circumcircle of three relatively close points. So here's three relatively close points. In fact, I'll specify the location of this point um, to be t minus h and the location of this point to be t plus h. And then we can make them incident to the circle. Uh, so here's my approximation to the circle, the circle of curvature, and its radius will be approximation to the radius of the radius of curvature. So let me do that, and we get this um, somewhat complicated expression. What I'd like to look at that uh, look look at is the limit as um, h tends to zero. So I'm going to copy that into Maple. So there we have the expression, and I'm going to take the limit of the above um, as h becomes 0, and I'm going to give, specify a direction, I'll take the right-handed limit, so h is going down to 0 from above. Um, and uh, so Maple gives us this uh, nice expression, which is, in fact, the radius of curvature. Uh, let me uh, copy that. Now I'm going to create a circle which goes through T and has that appropriate radius. Now we'd like it to be tangential, of course, to the original uh, ellipse, so we'll create the tangent um, here at point T and make that circle tangent to the tangent to the ellipse. And so there we have uh, the circle of curvature. We can see it's quite close to um, uh, our approximation. Let's make the approximation worse so we can see the difference. So we'll make the approximation worse by increasing h. Um, so there we can see this is the approximation. Uh, this curve is the approximation, and this curve is the, the circle of curvature. Right, so let's get rid of the approximation for now. And we're left with the circle of curvature. We can see, um, oops, when I drag T here, actually I'm changing A and B, which I don't want to do. Let me lock A and B. And for that matter, I can lock H. Actually, I don't even need H, so we don't really worry about it. As I move T around now, you can see there's the circle of curvature as T gets small. Um, that's what it looks like as it gets big. I might be interested in the locus of the center of the circle of curvature. And we can see... Um, what that looks like, a curve that looks like that. Um, we can ask for its equation, and if we want, I don't want it's taking rather long time to compute, so let's not worry about that. One interesting fact we can see is that if we take the normal to the original ellipse, so that's the perpendicular to the tangent. There we 
we go. As we move here around, we can observe that in fact, that normal to the ellipse actually appears to be tangential to the um, to the center to the locus of the centers of the circle of curvature. Um, and in fact, that is a, a theorem of differential geometry that that is the case. The the the, the um, envelope of the normals is the um, locus of the centers of the circles of curvature. And that would have been if had we known that theorem, that would be an alternate way of getting at this uh, quantity. Now let me show you how that would that would work. Let me again create my. Uh, Ellipse. So there's my equation of the ellipse. Um, again, I'm going to put, see a, a specific location, a parametric location t on the ellipse. I'm going to create the normal uh, by first creating the tangent. And then creating the perpendicular to the tangent. And now if I want the envelope of the normals, that's the curve that the normals are, are perpend that all the normals are tangential to, um, I, I, I take the locus of that normal line. Uh, parametric variable t, 0 to 2 pi, and there we have the curve. Now, what I want is the point on the curve which corresponds to uh, this location t on the uh, ellipse, and I can simply specify the parametric location of that of this point to be t, and we'll see it. Uh, it will put itself. Ah, uh, my a's and b's are moving again. Let me just lock those. Okay, so now as we, as we move t around, we can see. In fact, we've now created the the the, the point which lies on. Um, uh, on the uh, envelope of the normals. The, the technical name for the envelope of the normals is the evolute curve, but we can see that the distance between this point and this point is in fact uh, the radius of curvature. Uh, and um, if we wanted to, we could draw uh, the circle of curvature uh, like this. If we ask for its radius, uh, there we get it. So we've done number five, 55, the curvature of the conic section. I'm going to stop here and do the next one uh, as a different uh, video.